The Jad Spotlight, Episode 16. All right, everyone, what's up? I'm Yanni Lunga from thejetspotlight.com and welcome to this 16th episode of the Jet Spotlight podcast. It's finally here. The day has finally arrived. I'm really excited about this. As you know, the podcast is usually weekly, so every week I have a new episode, a new guest here on the show. And from today, we're going to have a special edition of the podcast because the podcast is going to become daily only for this week. I'm super excited because I'm going to have guests from the 2014 edition of the Porridgeets Festival here in Pori, Finland. Some great stars that we're going to talk about many different things. So it's really exciting. And just I want to just give you some some link where you can find every day the new episode of the podcast. You can find them at thejetsspotlet.com slash podcast. And remember that you can find the links to the to this episode, you know, to some of the things we talked about, some of the names that were mentioned at thejetspotlight.com slash episode 16. The first guest of this episode is a simply great guitar player. There isn't anything he hasn't been doing during his career. He he was born in Philly, he had been performed in the New York scene, and many of you might remember him as the band leader of the band of the popular show, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Yes, that's right. Today's guest is Kevin Hubanks. It's just uh, amazing to have him here on the show. And you know, he's going to talk with us about about growing up in Philly, playing in New York, the Tonight Show. And he's also going to give out practical advice to young musicians who would like to follow his footsteps and also to those who are planning to form a band and are thinking about becoming band leaders. So here is the first episode of the special edition of the Jet Spotlight podcast. A just talk with Kevin Newbanks. Enjoy. Hey everybody, what's up? Yanni Lunga here and welcome to this special edition of the Jet Spotlight Podcast. I'm here at the Pori Jets Festival in Pori, Finland, and I have a great guest here, a super guitarist. I'm really excited. There is so much to say about this guest. He has been playing, he has been teaching, he has been a band leader since the age of 25, he has been releasing, released many albums, and is here performing with Dave Holland, Craig Taborn, and Eric Arland as part of the PRISM project. It's with great pleasure that I welcome on the show Kevin Eubanks. Hey, Mr. Eubanks, how are you? I'm good, man. It's beautiful up here in Pori, man. It's really nice here. I love playing outside, too, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, you obviously you cannot see the weather because you're listening from, you know, <laughs> from the website or iTunes, YouTube, but here it's a gorgeous day. And, you know, the stage is really in the middle of, of the nature and it's about 2 p.m. So very nice day, really nice summer weather. Perfect time for playing, wouldn't you say? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, and like I said, I love playing outside any any time, except when it's raining. But even <laughs> sometimes when it's raining, after the rain settles, like I was playing in um, in Texas uh, one time, and it was a thunderstorm, and they thought mm-hmm. the show was going to be canceled. But the thunderstorm stopped, and it was so much energy in the air. It was at nighttime, and everybody came back out, and the, the energy after the rainstorm and the thunder and lightning, man, and, and it all got... It's like a different, we're in the middle of nature then too, but mm-hmm. it wasn't like the, you know, the pine trees like here in Pori, but all the energy welled up. So I think when you play outside, it's just a natural source of energy. You know, just like when you mm-hmm. go outside yourself, you just get more energy, you know, it's nice. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, if you like playing outside, you should come here during the winter because, you know, the weather is not as, you know, as good as it is today. It's right. pretty cold and would be, would be nice to see bands performing here with minus 20 degrees or something like oh. that. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but... <laughs> okay. All right about, about the weather. Let's go a bit more into your career because you are from Philly, right? A great city, great musical city. What what did you know growing up in Philly meant to you as a musician? You come from from a family of musicians. Yeah, it was a lot of fun because um, during that time in Philadelphia, there were neighborhood bands everywhere. So since I can remember as a kid, I was always playing with bands, and we were playing dances or for schools or 
anything, um, jam sessions, but everybody, every neighborhood had a uh, had a band. Mm-hmm. So we all played together and it was just a great time. And we didn't we just had a lot of fun and um I played a lot more uh, rock music and stuff like that coming up. So we just had a blast and growing up in that environment where um you were at 12 13 years old playing um shows you're just having fun but later on you look back on it and it's really valuable that it happened. I remember my um, my mom and dad arguing over whether I should be able to play in bars at 13 years <laughs> old. Um, but my mom won out because she's a musician too. So um, I was playing, you know, bars. They call them clubs now. I was playing clubs when I was 13 years old. So it was fun, man. Yeah. And, and you and you said that you have been, you kind of started out with uh, with rock, and then when you maybe when you moved to New York, is that you kind of get got more into jazz you played with artists like R. Blackley and Roy Haynes mm-hmm. How, what do you remember about those times in New York um, well that I was really really broke I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was really poor so it makes New York a, a bit more interesting when you, you really um, I'm working in a bakery or a waiter or making sandwiches and uh But at night, you try to practice all night. And I was really afraid to play with musicians, you know, because I didn't think I was good enough. So then, um, you know, and I start playing with people. But what I remember most about the uh, the great musicians that I was fortunate enough to play with is their personalities, mm-hmm. not just the music that they played. or uh, it, it was more the feeling that I got from them as a person touring with them, being on the road with them and how they, you know, how they handled the band or how, you know, the things they taught me to do. But really when you're um, with some of these, these legends of music like Art and Roy Haynes and Sam Rivers, people like that, McCoy Tyner, um, of course you learn a lot musically. Mm-hmm. That's definitely, <laughs> and they expect a lot from you and, you know, you, you, you feel good because they hired you, you know, so like, oh, I want to really play good. I'm playing with Roy Haynes. And, um, but you, you really get a sense of their personalities, their, mm-hmm. the originality of, of the person, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, they, they all had something that was inside of them that made their music different from the next person or something, you know, the originality mm-hmm. of the person came from, seems like that came first and then you feel it in the music mm-hmm. each one of these guys had specific personalities that were different from each other you know they mm-hmm. were they were really original you know creators of the music you know we mm-hmm. kind of learned from them and everything but mm-hmm. these you know the, the thing i learned most from them is that i was fortunate enough to play with some really original music personalities And and what advice would you have to young musicians who perhaps feel the same way you felt that, you know, they are kind of up and coming artists. They are maybe about to play with important artists or performing at important stages, festivals, venues. What kind of advice would you have for them? Um, to, first of all, enjoy the time you have playing music. It's really precious. Mm-hmm. Um, don't let people discourage you because... Maybe you're not making enough money or your name is not big enough or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Deal with the music and the the friendships that you have around you, the other musicians that you're playing with, and have fun and um, be dedicated to it, you know, mm-hmm. and really believe, believe in your love of music. Mm-hmm. And that will take you through a lot of places that nothing else can. Because you find all kinds of crazy stuff in this business. But if you remember and stay in touch with your love of music, it'll take you, it'll elevate you above a lot of the petty stuff that you have to deal with. Mm-hmm. And maybe the last stop of this kind of tour of your career, in a way, has been L.A. Because you, you relocated to L.A. to be member of the band of the Tonight Show with Jay Leno for 15 years. What impact did that have on your career? Oh, a lot. Um, I got to do arrangements and work with everybody from Leanne Rimes to um, Buddy Guy and B.B. King and um, 
Dolly Parton um, and playing music behind, you know, with a, with a, a great comedian like Jay and um, Bill Cosby and people like that. So um, it really showed me different ways to use, you know, creativity mm -hmm. in a way that uh, enhanced, that, that contributed to everything else. So it just made everything a lot broader, mm -hmm. make everything bigger, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I learned so much doing that. And I got an appreciation for bluegrass music because I got to hang out with a lot of cats from Nashville mm -hmm. and write with some people. So it just broadened everything a, a lot. Mm -hmm. So it really, really opened my eyes to a lot of things. It was really nice. And I have to spend one more minute to tap into your story and your experience because you you are one of the most in demand guitarists uh, of this of these years, like incredible career. And what it's also interesting about your career is that at the age of 25 you became a band leader, so a pretty pretty young age, but already a sign of a strong personality. And what would you tell to? to the musicians who perhaps are in their 20s, 22, 25, who, who are also thinking of, you know, forming a band or they would like to be band leaders. What would you tell them? Um, to really, um, if you really feel like that's something you that you are, not that you're just trying to be, but if you really feel like you're a band leader, you know, and you're willing to stick it out for a long time, then... Um, It's being a band leader is something that you kind of have a calling for you, you know, mm -hmm. and also, you know, sometimes people like force it. They go like, well, everybody else has a band. Just mm -hmm. because you have a band doesn't make you a band leader. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have a certain kind of personality, a certain, you know, I don't know, a certain feel for it that mm -hmm. makes you a good band leader. It's like you have to be a little bit more think a little bit ahead but naturally think ahead mm -hmm. you know at least for me anyway um you just have to love that bringing everything together when i became a band leader in, in new york back then there were no gigs for guitars mm -hmm. there was you i became um you know because i like to write a lot mm -hmm. and it started in college but it just so happens in new york there were very few gigs elvin jones the heath brothers and uh um roy haynes They had guitar players, very few guitar mm -hmm. bands to get, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, it's quite natural for a lot of guitar players to start their own bands because at the time, it's a lot different now. Mm -hmm. A lot of guitar players in New York. Um, back then, there just wasn't any jobs. Mm -hmm. So you start your own band um, because you want to play mm -hmm. more. But also, if you have a, a natural feel for being a band leader, you kind of know it inside. But sometimes I think people force it and mm -hmm. they say, well, I'm going to have my own band mm -hmm. when they would maybe do better being in a good band mm -hmm. instead of being the leader of a good band. Mm -hmm. And even when you are a band leader, if, you know, um, people ask you to play with them, depending on this, like when I'm playing with Prism right now, it doesn't matter. I'm just here to play some great music, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so you got to really have a good sense of yourself mm -hmm. to to really take on being a band leader because it's a lot of responsibility and a lot of you're going to learn a lot of things so mm -hmm. you you have a real open mind but you have to have a certain kind of heart to and be honest with yourself am i just being a band leader because i want it or am i being a band leader because i am a band leader you know mm -hmm. um, you know Yeah, definitely. Those are very wise words. And I think it's really important to, like you said, you know, to kind of to reflect for a moment and see, you know, like, as you just said, like, do I have the heart mm -hmm. for being a band leader or perhaps would be better that I'm a, a band member, a very good one, a yeah. great band member. Yeah. And sometimes being a band member um, works out great. You know, um, and uh, it just it just depends on how you see yourself. Was you know sometimes you become a band leader out of ego, mm -hmm. or or you just don't know any better. You, maybe mm -hmm. it's not ego, but maybe you think that's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That's the next step. Well, I've gotten this far now. The next thing is for me to have my own band. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. So I mean, um, I've when I was playing on television, I met so many people um, that been working for 35 years. Mm -hmm. You know 
they were never a band leader, but they worked all the time. Mm-hmm. And there's some cats that become band leaders, and then they don't work anywhere. Mm-hmm. They don't. They can't play because they never got their band mm-hmm. going, you know. But some guys that play rhythm guitar, they play with everybody, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> uh, you you can be a great band member, mm-hmm. which is a great art mm-hmm. of being a band, a, a really great band member. Mm-hmm. There's a beautiful art in that, and and making the band sound better, making another person sound better, mm-hmm. and contributing that way, and you become invaluable in that way too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if you're a drummer and you make everybody sound good, you work forever. Mm-hmm. But then when you say, "No, I'm working with everybody else. I need to be a band leader now," but maybe th- you got it. You're you're a great band member. You make everybody sound good, which is a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. It, you know. In a, you know, maybe in magazines and everything, you don't get the same type type of recognition, mm-hmm. and maybe that messes with your head. But maybe that's your spot to be. Like when I was on TV, it wasn't my show; <laughs> it was Jay's show. Mm-hmm. But I helped so much and got good at helping that it's like this feels good, mm-hmm. and this is what I should be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, so you got to keep your ego in check and your mind and heart open. Yeah, and also I think al- always to keep in mind that you know it's a collective effort. Mm-hmm. So like what you said now, the the last part, especially of the of the tonight show, I think it's a great example because I think sometimes people forget about all the kind of people that they are behind a band or even a TV show or a live concert, like band members, but also you know. Uh, Uh, people of the of the festival and these kind of things and i also liked when you mentioned about the the press coverage because i think it's important of i understand that that you know can really kind of put your self esteem down or may yeah. but you you if you feel good with yourself like you said if you feel that you know you feel that you want to be a band member and a great band member like you said for example a drummer who really makes all the other members sound good I think there is no better feeling in the world. And I have last question for you. Now we are in in July, and I know that you are gonna wrap up your European tour with Prism at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. And what plans do you have for the second half of the of the year? Um, to uh, relax, <laughs> <laughs> which is never bad. <laughs> I want to relax a little bit. I've been playing. All year, I think I started uh, this year's touring. I started in February, man, and mm-hmm. um, and I, you know I need a break, <laughs> and it'd be good to kind of sit back and write some music mm-hmm. and and uh, do some different different things because uh, mm-hmm. you know I'm always working on something. So it's good to be working on something without a deadline. Mm-hmm. I can just kind of lay back, and mm-hmm. um, so hopefully. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing. I got a couple things that I, you know, a few shows I got to play, but mm-hmm. hopefully I get to relax, you know, for, you know, when we get back. I'm not done. We finish at the end of August. So starting September. Okay. You know, because yeah. we still have to, we still have, a, a, you know, a lot of gigs to do. So in September, hopefully I can relax and, you know, kind of cool out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mr. Eubanks, thank you so much for being with the podcast today and, you know, looking forward to hear you in half an hour. All right, man. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. That was Kevin Eubanks. Mr. Eubanks, if you're listening, thank you so much once again for being on the podcast and, you know, for sharing your story and also for giving out some tips that I'm sure are going to be Much appreciated for many young artists around the world. So guys, this was the first episode of the Jet Spotlight podcast, the special edition of the podcast. Once again, a quick reminder that for this week and this week only, the podcast is going to be daily. So new guests every day. You can find all the episodes at thejetspotlight.com slash podcast. And the links to this episode is thejetspotlight.com slash episode 16 and you know if you're a Kevin Eubanks fan or you know you just enjoyed this episode this interview feel free to share the link thejetspotlight.com slash episode 16 whatever you like your blog if you have a blog Facebook Twitter YouTube whatever you like I definitely appreciate it and thank you very much in advance if you do share this link with you know with your friends with your followers with your colleagues with whoever you know i I really appreciate it so once again this is the special edition of the jazz spotlight podcast with some of the stars of the pori jets festival 2014 and amia nilunga 
Have a great day.